and amen on the General of Deliverance podcast, amen. And also we're on Facebook Live and Ivory Hopkins YouTube. Greetings, greetings to everyone. You know, today I have a very powerful, insightful message that I am sure many of you will gain a not, lot of wisdom and knowledge out of them. Matter of fact, the title of today's message uh, tonight is Why So Many Are Demonized in the Church in Today's Society. Why So Many Are Demonized in Church in Today's Society. And the reason is, is the rise of false teachers and preachers causing many to fall away from God. That's exactly why it's happening. My de dear friend, do understand, glory be to God, that Apostle Hopkins is not here trying to trend, trying to get a bunch of likes. We're here to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ so that men and women's souls may be saved from their sin and not end up in hell. And I know right well, even just to say end up in hell, that is not a popular uh, teaching today because people don't want to hear that, but I'm not going to back up from the truth. So I'm going to tell y'all something. A lot of these modern day preachers are leading a lot of people astray and causing them to fall from the faith. And what this message is about today, tonight, is to talk about, amen, what these false teachers are doing and why, and how come so many people of falling away from the faith and losing their soul. You better be careful what you get engage yourself with, with these false teachers. Before I get deep into this teaching, I want to take a little time to thank every single one of you that have felt led of the Lord or just gracious in your heart to sow a $5 donation towards what we are doing. Yes, we could ask for more. We could do this, do that. But that's not where my heart is at. And some of you have given us a lot more than $5. But I say to you, I appreciate every one of you that have sown a $5 donation or even more. And those that don't have anything, the gospel is free. Those that do not, amen, listen to this and don't sow anything, just enjoy the message. Now, that being said, I'm going into the message entitled, Why So Many Are Demonized in Church in Today's Society, The Rise of False Teachers and Preachers Causing Many to fall away from the faith. These teachers, these men and women are causing so many people to fall away from the faith. I'm going to come out of the Bible. I use the King James Version. I also use other translations. But let's listen what the Apostle Paul said in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Amen? Now listen what it says here. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. Now notice what it says. There will be a departure of the faith. And how is this departure going to take place? By giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. I maintain to tell y'all that many of these preachers out here that are teaching that, there's, that God doesn't deal with sin anymore, that you can live any kind of way you want to and still make it into God's kingdom, they are doing it by seducing spirits and doctrine of devils. That's right. No matter how cute, lean, lean, mean, and whatever they look to you all, no matter how trending these preachers are, they're leading people straight to hell. Paul said it well in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Now the Spirit speak expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And uh, Timothy 4 and 2 says they will do it by speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. There is a whole lot of these false teachers and preachers that we are listening to. Some of you are you listening to on Facebook. Some of you are listening to them on YouTube and other means. Their conscience is seared with a hot iron. They're doing things in church that is abominable, just straight up crazy, irreverent. And the reason why they're operating like this with irreverent things is because their conscience is bound up and their teaching is loaded with seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. When you have a seducing spirit coming out of a preacher, they will stand up or allow in their church stuff that would go on in any dive or any nightclub somewhere where nobody's serving the Lord. Folk coming in all kinds of ways and living any kind of way. My dear friend, I'm, I'm preaching this old school, old fashioned, according to the gospel, Bible teaching. Amen. Now I'm going to go with number one. Why is this happening? Number one, 
The reason this is happening is because many preachers are today are not teaching the foundation of the gospel. I'm going to say it. My number one reason why many people are being drawn astray today is because many preachers today are not teaching the foundation of the gospel. They're not teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, listen what it says by the writer of Hebrews. Therefore, leaving the principles of doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again or not laying aside, number one, the foundation of repentance from dead works. Some of these people up here preaching are not even teaching people to repent of their dead work. Also, repentance from dead work is a foundation of the gospel. It is a foundation of being born again repenting from your sin. Number two, faith towards God and not in the arm of flesh. Jeremiah 17, 5 says, cursed he that trusteth in the arm of flesh. There is a whole lot of preaching going on nowadays. It ain't nothing but a bunch of flesh, showmanship, glory be to God, and entertainment, the celebrity spirit. And I'm not speaking uh, saying this so much about someone is just generally trying to act, but the church has become an act itself. Glory be to God. And if we preachers, if preachers don't get down to preaching the gospel, let me tell you what's going to happen. You're going to end up looking like a fool, guiding people to hell and standing before God being judged. And many preachers like myself are going to keep right on preaching the gospel. Oh, guess what? The apostle Paul said in one verse, it must need be that heresies may be so that that which is approved may be made manifest. So thank you, you false teacher. Thank you, you wolf in sheep's clothing for being who you are. If that's the way you want to live, if that's the way spirit you want to walk under, we that are right in God, we that are preaching the truth according to the gospel, we're going to preach it and teach it whether you get mad or not. Oh, by the way, and these girls and guys will be trending because there's a whole lot of people out here in today's society is clicking, liking, trending, and, and drawing stuff that ain't got no biblical foundation. What I am looking for, what God is looking for us is to teach the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Hebrews 6, 1 and 2, I'm going to read what the word said, not ivory. Therefore, leaving the principles of doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. Look at it. Repentance from dead work. Faith towards God and also of the doctrine of baptism, the laying out of hand, the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. Now, oh, wait a minute. I thought some preacher out there was preaching that there was no hell. There was no eternal judgment. Where the Bible says in Hebrews 6, Chapter 6 and chapter verse 2, that we are to teach the doctrine of baptism, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. Some of y'all are listening to these clowns out there preaching this mess, trying to tell you that there is no judgment, that God is not dealing with sin anymore. Do you listen? These people are absolutely agents of the devil. They've got demons coming out of their mouth, demons in their hearts preaching this stuff. Now, Brother Ivory, you need to be nice. You shouldn't say that. My dear, you're either getting your preaching from the inspiration of the Word of God and the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the living God, or your preaching is coming directly from your flesh and the demon inside you. Now, I'm going to move on to number two. Number two, the Apostle Paul realized that we will see false teachers and preachers like we are seeing today. The first century church Back there then, they were already rising up. And today, they've got real sharp at it. Are oh, you all hear me? Look what the Apostle Paul said in Acts chapter 20, verse 29 through 32. For I know this, that after my departure, shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the sheep. Paul called them wolves. He called them wolves. Now, why did he call them wolves? He was talking about that spirit that was in them. A wolf will go through a flock and eat its flesh and kill its babies and not even care. Just as long as that wolf feels his belly and get what he wants. The apostle Paul said, I know this, that after my departure 
shall grievous wolves enter in among you. Notice, among you, among the church, not sparing the flock. And also of your own selves. Listen, he said in verse 30, also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. The reason why these false teachers, these hustlers, these preacher pimps are saying what they're saying because they're drawing people towards them. They are not drawing you to Christ. They're not drawing, drawing you to God the Father. They're not drawing you to godly living. They're drawing you to themselves. They've got that same demon that Nimrod had in the Tower of Babel in Genesis chapter 6 when he said, let us go up and make a name for ourselves. There are many of you sitting out here, you know the name of this preacher, the name of that church, the name of that mega or that small little corner of mind control and manipulation you're sitting in, but you don't know Jesus. You don't know Yeshua. You don't know him in departing of your sin. You don't know him and walking in kingdom lifestyle. Yeah, I said it. There is a lifestyle that is connected to the kingdom of God. Listen, my dear friends, Paul said in verse 32, 20 and 32, Acts 20 and 32, he said, now, brethren, I command you to God, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you inheritance among all them which are sanctified. But I'm going to read Acts 29 through 32 again. Paul said, for I know this, that after my departure, grievous wolves it will enter in among you, not sparing the sheep, the flock, they're here. Also of your own self shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples, after themselves. They're right here. They're on YouTube. They're, they're on the media. They're in churches. They're doing it. These wolves. Therefore, watch and remember, by the space of three years, I cease not to warn you, warn you night and day with tears. Paul was preaching to them with tears. This tonight, this evening, today on this program, I am begging you, and I'm saying to many of you, Get away, get out from among them and get separated from these false teachers and preachers. Quit putting that stuff in your spirit, man, because you're eating the garbage of demons. You're eating the seed of Satan in the preaching that you're listening to, this demonic false teaching that has no foundation. Number three, the other reason is these teachers are leading so many to go to hell for money and trending likes on an algorithm. Yeah, I said it again. These teachers, these false preachers, prophets and apostles are leading so many to hell for money and trending likes on an algorithm. Look what it says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2 and 3. That's 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2 and 3. We are told as preachers to feed the flock of God which is among you. Taking the oversight, therefore, not by constraint, don't hold back, tell the truth, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but for of a ready mind. That word filthy lucre is straight up talking about money. Many folks, amen, glory be to God, are pumping and hustling a thousand dollar prophetic line or ten thousand dollars to get a breakthrough. Are y'all losing your mind up in here? The Bible, glory be to God, does not teach us to do such things as this. And look what it says in 1 Peter 5 and 3. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being an example to the flock. Some people are lording over the flock. I have prayed for many people where these preachers have folk under so much control until you know they're preaching error. You know they're living in sin. You know they're acting just like the world and bringing the world and its mess in the church. Who ever heard of a church telling people it's okay to get high? Who ever heard of a church telling the people you can live any kind of lifestyle you want to and still make it in? I maintain to tell you these filthy preachers, they are teaching this because they're getting money. They're getting paid. They're trending. They're getting likes. First Peter 5 and 4. Let me go ahead and say this. At which, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a clown of glory that fadeth not away. Let me read these verses again. In First Peter 5, 2 through 4, God tells them, Peter is telling them, feed the flock of God which is among you. 
taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being an example to the flock. And verse 5, 5 and 4, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. I am preaching this message this evening. I am preaching on this podcast, the General of Deliverance podcast. I am preaching this strong, not because I'm trying to trend, not because I'm trying to make the algorithm go up. I'm preaching this word because one day I will stand before our chief apostle, which is Jesus Christ, uh, Yeshua is his name. One day I will stand before the chief shepherd and I will receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. And I will take that crown and lay it uh, before the father's feet. And I know the crown of glory is a symbolic and a prophetic emanation of the glory and grace of servitude that we serve God, the Lord Jesus Christ, to honor his father. My dear friends, there are teachers out here that they're getting their reward right now. Their reward is to walk around with bling bling, walk around with algorithms, walk around living their life and their wives, living their life like God knows what. And we sitting back, I don't know whether I don't, what we said, don't judge. Anybody that doesn't make judgments means your vision is impaired. If you can't make a judgment and a determination of something that is ungodly, something that is not the word of God, something is wrong. You are impaired, my dear friend. The Bible teaches us, prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. The Bible teaches us to judge when it comes to doctrine, judge when it comes to teaching, judge when it comes to lifestyle. I'm moving on to number four. Many in this society, society will follow these liars and false teachers because they are preaching, uh, uh, they are preaching what they want to hear. That's right. They're following you because you are preaching what they want to hear. In other words, the preachers out there, yeah, yeah, some of you preachers out there, I know why your place is loaded up. I know why there's hardly room to sit down because you're preaching what people want to hear rather than pleasing God. But one day, You will stand before your maker and he will require of you, preacher, why didn't you tell my people the truth? Why didn't you tell the word the truth? Well, if I tell them the truth, they might not like me. My mom and them, my brothers and sisters and them are living a certain way. I don't care who is not living according to the word of God. You know I have no right to change the word of God. If I wasn't living right, you don't want to be listening to me. If I was not living according to God's word, you don't want me guiding you with nothing. Some of you need to leave some of these pits called churches. Some of y'all need to leave some of these online ministries that are online ministries. They're not online, they're online. They're lying and they're showing false manifestations of what's supposed to be God when it's not. Look what the apostle Paul said. Amen. It's 2 Timothy 2 through 4. 2 Timothy 2 through 4. He says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Talking to the preachers. Talking to them that are supposed to be carrying the word. Listen what he said. 2 Timothy 4 and 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearance and his kingdom. God is coming back. Jesus is coming back, and he's going to judge the quick and the dead at his appearing. And are you hearing me? He, we are told in fact, 2 Timothy 4 and 2, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. This is what we have a problem. Because these preachers are not preaching instant in season, out of season. They are not uh, rebuking. They are not reproving of sin and of righteousness. You don't have, listen, I'm going to tell you the game the demons are playing with us. And some of us go, I don't want nobody to call me a hater. I don't want no one to think that I'm a hater. Well, my dear friends, it is not hate when you look at life and call things what the Bible says and care about someone's soul. It is not hate when you're saying, I love people, but there are people in our families, in our society, on our job, that their soul is in danger. These demons are the problem. 
I am a hater of demons. I'm a hater of demons because they have changed the gospel. They have changed the image of mankind. They have changed the image of, of, of our God to the image of, of beasts and four-footed things. Man, and we were created in the image of God, and these demons are changing the very image that mankind was created by their creator. And I, as a preacher, am supposed to say nothing. Well, let me help you. I'm saying something up in here. I'm going to preach the word, 2 Timothy, Timothy 2, 3, and 4. I'm going to preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. Rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering doctrine. For the time will come, listen what it says. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. It's here. The time has come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust. Are y'all hearing me? There are people that are looking for ministries that will validate your own lust. They will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Is anybody hearing me? This demon is here. And there are pe preachers all on the internet preachers all around to these to the nations that are coming away from the gospel of Jesus Christ and they are preaching false doctrine, not sound doctrine, faith towards God, repentance from dead works, the doctrine of baptism, come on, and eternal judgment. They're not preaching it. But a time will come they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, they shall heap to themselves teachers and having itching ears. So people, the reason why these people are filling these places, the reason why it's trending so well, is because you want a preacher to say your sin is okay. I remember one time an individual had said to me, they were talking about sin and, and they were talking about sins of immorality. And as I was talking to the person, I said, well, let me ask you a question. I said, you know that I am married to Sister Evelyn. They said, yes. I said, well, would it be okay if I take on another woman? Is it sin? Brother Ivory, you can't do that. I said, well, wait a minute. If we can live anything we want to and you're to love me at any state that I live, why don't you just love me and not judge me if I take, and take on another woman that's not my wife? If I do that, I am in sin. It's called adultery. My dear friend, we can't change the gospel for Ivory. Neither can we change it for you. Are y'all hearing me? But there are people that are looking for teachers that will validate their lust. They're looking for teachers that will say your demon, your stronghold, your rebellion, your sin is okay. But there are many of us out here that are preaching the truth of the gospel and we fear God. I fear God. I feel God. I fear God more than I fear my children. I fear God more than I fear grandchildren. I feel God. I fear God more than I fear my mama. I fear God more than I fear anybody. So I'm not going to put my soul in danger by not preaching the truth. Lest somebody in my family, in my friendship, on my job will be mad with me. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to preach the word of God and call it what it is. I will not be one of these pimping preachers, these hustling liars that are causing people to go to hell. Next thing, number five, these teachers operate under false signs and wonders. Many at one time was called by God, but like Balaam, they sold out. Did y'all hear that? I'll say it again. These teachers are operating under false signs and wonders. At one time, they were genuinely prophesying, but their prophetic gift became pimped and hustled by them to the point that their gift became contaminated. And now they have a dual manifestation like Balaam. The enemy, the greed, the lust, the bondage in Balaam caused him to prophesy and God was not giving him the word in his mouth. And at the same time, there were times when God was speaking to Balaam. I say to some of you false prophets out there, some of you prophetic people who at one time you were really prophetic, you were humble before God. Or is your prophetic gift pure anymore? Do you have any integrity anymore? 
Or is it all about raising a bank account that one day when you die, that bank account will be spread by your will be spread around some of your greedy family, will be spread around either by the government taking everything that you went to hell to gain. People, what is it? What is it to profit a man or a woman to gain the whole world and lose their soul? I remember one particular teacher years ago, God had given this powerful teacher a message of sanctification, a message of holiness. And I said, when I listened to that teacher, I said, all that person has to do is stay in line with the message of purity and holiness that God started them with. Well, here goes what happens. Often God will cause our lives and our names to become great to magnify his name. Yeah, the spirit of God will cause your name, your ministry, the work you're doing to become great in the earth. But here goes what it's becoming great for. You are only becoming great and well-known and trending to honor God. But some after God has given their name notoriety, they've gotten to a place where in people believe in them and hear what they're teaching. And at one time they taught the truth. Now these false teachers, now they have fallen away from the faith and now they're teaching damnable stuff. And it's sad to say, I listen to some of these younger preachers in our society, and I listen to them and I go like, who in the world ever trained you? Or have you had any training? Who in the world ever taught you the gospel? Have you ever been taught? Where are you coming up with some of this damnable teaching? Where are you coming up with doing stuff in your church that would work in a gentleman's club? Where do you get that from, man? Hey, girl, where you get that from? Are you losing your mind? Yeah, you lost your mind and some demon then took it over. Let me tell you what it says in Jude. My point number five says teachers are operating under false signs and wonders. Many at one time was called by God, but like Balaam, they sold out. Look what it says in the book of Jude. Jude chapter one, verses 11 through 13, 11 through 14. Jude chapter one, 11 through 14. Listen what it says. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the era of Balaam for reward and perish in the gainsaying of Korah. These are spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water. Carried about of winds, trees, whose fruit wherewith, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the root. Now, Jude is making it quite clear, amen, that they are corrupt. They are murderers. They kill the folks. They kill the people with the damnable stuff they're teaching. They've gone to heir of Balaam for money, for reward. And they've gone to gainsaying of Korah. They're rebellious. And God judged Korah. God judged Cain. And God judged Balaam. Listen to what he says. Verse 13, 14, and 15. Raving waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. Have you ever seen how some of these preachers, I mean, I'm looking at, do y'all have any shame? They do such crazy stuff right now that's trending. Preachers. And I look at them and say, you ain't got a shred of shame. Let, let, I don't know whether you're ignorant or just so demonized that you can't even tell what common sense is. Because some of the stuff they're doing out here that people are feeding into. I'm going like, are y'all kidding me? Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. Wandering stars from whom is reserved the blackness and the darkness forever. Wandering stars. Going from place to place. Heaping in people that want to hear what they're teaching. Because the people want somebody to validate their sin. Rather than guide them to the king. <laughs> you said in. Jude 1, 14, and Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of thee, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh. Now, I'm going to say this to you. Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints. Verse 15, to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them, all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners has spoken against him. 
I want you to understand the people of God. I'm trying to tell you that I want many of you to come out from among the sin, come out from among this perversion, because one day God is going to return. And like it says in Jude, I'm going to read it one more time. He's going to return to execute judgment upon all to convince all that are ungodly among them, all their ungodly deeds. Are you doing ungodly deeds, which have ungodly, which they have ungodly committed of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners has spoken against him. When any false teacher, false prophet teaches a gospel that is not the foundational gospel of Jesus Christ, they are speaking ungodly against him. Verse 16 in the book of Jude. These are murmurers, complainers, walking about after their own lust. Their mouth speaking great swelling words. These people be sounding deep, sounding so deep, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. They're so deep. Well, we've got so-and-so coming to our church. We've got so-and-so. You, you measure the success of your preaching by what type of celebrity comes to your building. Well, let me say something to you. God loves the celebrity as well as he loves someone who is not a celebrity. But at the end of the day, when that celebrity hits your church, you best to be preaching the truth so that this celebrity will leave out with something that will save his soul after he's been doing that kind of work, that kind of thing. Are y'all hearing me? I'm going to move right along. These are murmurers complaining, walking about uh, after their own lust, and their mouths speak of great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. And the reason why they have men's persons in admiration, because they get an advantage out of it. Yeah, we want to make sure we have a special seat for the special person in a special corner. Now, everybody else, y'all said over there, <laughs> so-and-so is coming. So what? But you, but beloved, remember ye the word which, which speaking before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. My beloved, I want you to remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostle of our Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friend, as I get ready to close out here, if you have been caught up by these hustling, pimping, false teachers that are teaching error, that are not having church, they're having entertainment, that are acting just like somebody in some gentleman's club somewhere, that matching, you couldn't tell the difference. Lights, camera, action, pole, roll. Ridiculous. People of God, many of us who are preaching the truth, we need to stand upon the truth. If you're out there and you, and this message has touched your heart and you realize that you done got caught up in this trending garbage, you give your life to the Lord. Repent. Now, when, yeah, listen, we, and back in the day, we used to talk about something called old-fashioned backsliding. Many people are backslidden out there. Some of these backslidden hustlers and pimps called preachers are causing people to lose their soul. Yeah, I don't want anyone to go to hell. And hell is well. I don't believe a good God will send great people to hell. My dear friends, Hell and eternal judgment is real. The Bible speaks clearly about it, and I'm not going to open up to debate about it. See, you're not, we're not going to play that game. Well, let's have a debate, Hopkins. No, we ain't having no debate. I just got a fact. I don't debate facts. Fact is that Christ came to save the world because he loved the whole world. Fact is that he came that we might have eternal life and miss judgment. Fact is that hell was made for the devil and his angels. Fact is, if many of us don't live right according to the word of God, we could end up in danger of losing our soul to eternal judgment. Now, I don't care what you believe about that. Not here to debate you. Not even going to have it halfway. But we're living in a society where sound doctrine and truth is not being preached. If you, this message has touched your heart, Heavenly Father, ask the Father in the name of Jesus. In Yeshua's mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, I ask you to forgive me of the sin of following my own lust. Forgive me of my own perversion that my flesh likes but your words against. Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me for leading others astray. Ask them. Lord God, I repent because you gave me a platform to exalt your name, but I have exalted mine. Repent, preacher. 
Repent, you false teacher that's got all of them. Repent, or else you will die and go to hell. Repent, or else you will lose your eternal soul into judgment by God. Because one day we will all stand before that judgment seat. Now I'm going to name these five things and I am out. Number one, the reason this is happening is because many preachers today are not teaching the foundation of the gospel. Number two, the apostle Paul realized that we would see false teachers and false preachers like we are seeing today. And he warned about them. Don't let you be one. Number three, these teachers are leading so many to go to hell for money and trending likes on an algorithm. That's right. They get excited. Come on, they're adrenaline junkies. They get, they're getting high off of the likes, but their ways are perverted. They're, they actually, uh, they validate sin that God spoke against. Number four, many in this society will follow these liars and false teachers because they are preaching what they want to hear. You want to hear a gospel that says you can live any kind of way, do any kind of thing, and feel comfortable about it. What we say, I'm going to be me no matter what anybody says. I know. And you being you, no matter what anybody says, one day you will meet your actual maker who determines what me really is. Many in this society, they're going to follow these liars and false teachers because they are preaching what they want to hear. And number five, these teachers are operating under false signs and wonders. Many at one time was called by God, but like Balaam, they sold out. Are y'all hearing me? Like Balaam, they sold out. My dear friend, I trust that this message that we have ministered today is a blessing to you realizing the truth. And the title of the message again, is why so many demon are demonized in the church in today's society. Why are so many demonized in church in today's society? The rise of false teachers and preachers. My dear friends, I thank you for listening in. Now, we're getting ready to get on out of here. And I, as I said earlier to you, I appreciate every single one of you that saw a $5 cash app donation. If you don't have a dime to send or don't feel led, please just do that. I'm fine. I'm all good. Appreciate you. Now, as I usually tell you all, this is Apostle Ivory Hopkins. Amen. The general of deliverance. Those that want to cash app us, our cash app is General Ivory Hopkins. On the cash app, it's called General Ivory Hopkins. Amen. Thank you for your donation. Thank you for your prayers. Amen. Whether you give anything or not, we always can use prayers. Thank God for that. But my dear friend, all of us preachers out here are not preaching for, for, for money only. All of us out here preaching are not preaching to seduce people. All of us are not trying to trend. All of us are not trying to have our church operate like some kind of gentleman's club. Are you hearing me? And the people in there on their way to hell, living any kind of way, any kind of lifestyle they want. There are many of us who are actually preaching the truth and we ain't hating nobody. And you know, the bottom line is this, I'm not gonna stop preaching truth no matter who lives, whatever they live. But I am gonna keep saying what the gospel says because right now these demons are bold. These demons don't care. They are saying and manifesting whatever they want. And it's time that we preach the gospel and tell the truth. Rather they take me down off of YouTube, or off of any of the podcasts, if they take me down, at least I'm going to say something worth being taken down. If they take me down, at least I'm going to tell the truth on my way out. My dear friend, this society is jacked up. Demons are in the mouths of the pulpits. I ain't never heard such crazy stuff. Sometimes I always thought like sitting there making a list of insanity coming from the church and what have you. But you know what? Mm -mm. I'm going to keep preaching Bible. I'm going to keep preaching the word. Now, some of the things that I said, some of y'all are going to take this all kinds of way. Bottom line is, prove these scriptures wrong, then live otherwise then. Or if the scriptures are right, don't get mad with the mailman. Just take the message that is delivered. Well, God, but guys, I'm getting ready to get up out of here. Thank you for listening to the General of Deliverance podcast. That's Ivory, uh, uh, that's Ivory, Apostle Ivory Hopkins. 
the General of Deliverance podcast. We're on every major podcast. Many of you are listening at us on YouTube. Uh, we would like for you at YouTube, amen, to subscribe to our channel, amen, with, so that we can come with gospel intent to keep our souls and our lives and our walk pure before God according to scripture. Because I'm not going to bring y'all garbage. I'm not going to start doing stuff and saying anything just because this society is jacked up. God bless you, my dear friend. And I tell y'all like I always do, I want you always to remember that God, he is watching. God bless.